guys, Coach Neil Melanson here, the ground marshal with the jet setter, hey. carrying three bags. Jet line. <laughs> Ten eight. Ten eight. Uh, so what we're going to do today is um, we're going to do some work from the shoulder and guard system. I got tons of requests for this. I've done some videos already, but the real uh, the real secret to the shoulder pin is not only the grip, but it's also how you set it up. You want to make it like easy as possible. First thing you want to learn is the grip. Now, S grips are fine, cables are okay for this, but the three finger grip rules all when it comes to the shoulder pin. Only time I would use a three finger grip is when I'm trying to create pressure where my elbows have to pass each other. So if I'm, if I'm locked tight and I want to crank, if I do a gable and I crank like this, my hands come apart. S grip's a little better, you can kind of turn it a little closer. But when I have a three finger grip where your thumb goes in like a peace sign, I can crank and move my elbows but still have a pretty good strong hand grip. I would only use this for stuff like that. If I'm going to hug a guy, I just hug him. But when I, when I want to create that pressure with my elbows, the crank pain down on the AC joint, I use the three finger grip. Okay? Now, what I like to do is, instead of trying to tie a guy up, force the arm to the mat, and then go to this, it's too much work and you can buy your, the guy can stall you out. What I do is I try to get them to want to put their arm behind me. I want to make sure I get an angle. I focus on those things first, and then I go for my luck, okay? So, one example is if I'm in the guard here, let's say Carrington is sitting back posture, which is common. A lot of guys go here. I'm not going to waste my time trying to break them down. I go to him. I always go to where the fight is. The fight's here, I go to him. Because I want my system to be able to work in MMA. It's very important to me. So if I stay here and I try to break him down, I can't break, every time I miss on the breakdown, I'm eating a punch, okay? So I go to him, okay? So what I'm gonna start with is a two-on-one grip, okay? And Ricky Lundell uses this grip as well. And we go focus on one side. You know, a lot of, a lot of old school wrestlers like Gable used to work one side a lot and then switch, wear one side out, okay? It's the same kind of idea. So I'm baseball batting his arm. And what I'm going to do is I bridge my hip to move it to the outside. And now I'm going to pull myself up. So as I pull myself up, I'm going to get onto my right elbow. So I go here. Now as I get to here, I let go with my right arm. And I'm going to open my guard. Put my left foot on the mat. And I'm going to curl with my right leg. And I'm going to sit on his right leg. Here. Now, you see how close I am? If Carrington doesn't put his arm behind me and he puts it in front of me, then I'm behind him. He's not gonna do that. If he wants to give me his back, he can't. So here, he's gonna wanna hold me. He's gonna wanna keep me from going behind him. And now this allows me, my knee is already inside his bicep. I already have the angle, I'm good to go. So now, normally what they do, they're not gonna hang out here, they're gonna try to force me back to the mat. So when they do now, I kick my knee up and I lock my shoulder pin. Now from here, what you wanna do is this crank, I don't wanna push him away. You push it away, you give it away. I wanna crank, crank down this way, into his joint. So here, and that keeps him low. And then I cross my feet. And from here, I squeeze my knees. So if he wants to stack me, go ahead. You don't wanna stack me too much. It just keeps me in position. I don't push him away, don't give it away. Lock him in. Now I'm in. Now for me, I love my kneel knot. It works great for me. It's up to you if you wanna to go to it. But from this pressure now, I will unlock my feet and I go higher up on his shoulder and I get my hand inside. Okay, so when I do this, I'm starting to go for my attack. So I go here and now from this position, my hand turns palm facing towards the camera basically and I go under his chin and then I run it up. From here I grab my own chin, I grab my own forearm and I squeeze and that's that. So from this shoulder pin, crank, deep, roll, lock. Really nasty and very hard to get out of. 
Okay, you know, I'm okay? Yeah, it's good. So, it's not three finger grip. So here, my left three fingers, squeeze, high, up, lock, sweep. Now, in time, when you get good at this, you're gonna skip steps. So I skip steps here because I, I'm pretty comfortable with it. So what I do is I get my two on one, go to the outside, come up, put myself on the hip, but now as I out pull myself down, and I'm gonna go straight for the kneel nut. So as I go here, my left knee is gonna go high up his back as I bring myself down. So I'm gonna go high up his back, and I'm gonna go straight for the lock. Here, and lock. And then now I'm set. If he starts fighting me with this arm, I'll just bring this over. That way, if it doesn't work, I can start pulling him in for my choke, okay? Now, let's do the same thing, but a different way. I'm here. Pull. I go like this. He resists. Just keep your arm tight. He pulls it back, okay? Very common. So now I'm gonna go one, I feel resistance. I go two, and I pull to the side and I come up. Now I have his back. He's not gonna want me to take his back, so he's gonna swim with the left. There it is, there's the arm on the mat. My knee's already inside. So from here, I pull him back, my head goes into the frame. And now I lock my shoulder pin. Now I crank him, crank him, crank him. Lock, roll, finish. Or stack, triangle, lock, pull him in, pinch him in, very tight. So, doesn't matter which one I go to. You can mix up the order or whatever you want. But what I don't want is to take too much time breaking them down, forcing the arm to the mat, adding too many steps. Instead, I make him grab me. I make the angle. I make him grab me. It's tricks like that. Another one of my favorites is this. It's kind of a quick thing. I don't play around with it too much. Because where if I'm in half guard and I'm in my scissor, and his arm's not coming to the mat, he's being kind of, it's kind of dulling me out. I'll, I'll keep my foot here, I'll keep my foot inside, and I'll turn. There's the tight waist, there's my hip, there's my trap, lock, I stay in half, lock his other leg, there it is. Again, my choke. So, either way you wanna go, is try to change your philosophy of trying to force things Instead, focus on making him want to grab you. Give him a problem to solve. Oh, I'm going to take his back. He'll counter you. He doesn't want his back taken. But now you're already on the hip. You already have an angle. That's the time to attack. Things like this. This is how you're going to be able to score these things much faster with a whole lot less effort. Okay? Don't, don't wear yourself out trying to force things. I know guys that are good at the rubber guard, and they force it pretty well. But that's a totally different system. That system is, has a little more options, but it does require flexibility and some other things. And really, it's just a personal choice. I just make the shoulder pin work for me. And I've never had any problems with it. You know, as long as you create that downward pressure into the AC joint and not create pressure to the face. You create pressure to the face, they'll do that own body escape all day long. Go pressure into the joint, they stay stable for you to attack really that, that's what it is. So, going around with it, it takes some, takes some work, but once you get it down, I, I think you guys won't do anything else, you'll love it, okay? So, good work trying that, if not, buy my book, Mastering Triangle Chokes, guys, I, I have a whole section on the shoulder pin, and you guys can see everything I do with it there. All right, thanks. Yeah, sure. 10 eight. All right. Take care, guys, Peace. best of luck.